Paul 79 here. I hope you're safe and well. Welcome to part nine of my home EV build, where I'm hoping to uh, electrify a Porsche Boxster and also make it look like a GT3 RS. And it's blooming cold. Oh, anyway, this uh, this episode is going to be a short one. You'll be pleased to hear, and we'll be talking about the high voltage junction box. HVJB. Now this is very much an integral part of any uh, electric car because it's sort of the area where everything is brought together and power gets transferred from the battery pack to the electric motor you have. Anyway without further ado let's crack on. See ya! So here we have my high voltage junction box. So basically the, uh, the, high, the junction box is sort of the place where everything sort of meets right. It's where the, the high voltage battery positive and negative come in there's some magic that happens in there and then the power goes out to your electric motor in this case my uh, tesla large drive unit so if we sort of look it's it's actually quite simple and there is plenty of sort of wiring diagrams online but what we have if you look at my sort of mid-engine pack these are boxes of batteries and I've got positive and negative on each, and these will be linked in sort of series. And the whole battery pack will ultimately end up and come here, right? So I have a connector for the battery positive and negative. So when you go into the junction box, let's take the positive side first of all. So positive uh, uh, high voltage comes in. That's a Tesla fuse, right? So that's straight out of a Model S, right? So the high voltage will come through the fuse and then it will go into this thing. Now, the, I've got a couple of them here. I've got two big ones and a little one. These are called contactors. They're basically switches. They're very sort of heavy duty relays, okay? So you've got two poles. So uh, when there's no power to these, um, these contactors, they are closed, so no current can flow through, okay? And if you see, so you've got two connectors here, A and B, let's call them, and then you've got two wires that come out of them, yeah? So one is uh, for 12 volt power, and the other one is a ground. And the idea is, is this, let's call it a gate. This gate remains closed unless 12 volt power goes to the red wire here, and obviously the, the, the black is ground. And then the gate will open and allow current to flow through, okay? So this is sort of a safety thing as well. So not only have I got my fuse, but also the ignition. So I would wire these up, these contactors up to ignition. The ignition needs to be on for positive uh, voltage power to go through into the LDU positive connector there. And then similarly, similarly, I can't even say it, but it's almost the same as on the uh, on the negative battery side. So this comes in here. I also have uh, the negative going through a contactor as well. So you've got the same sort of thing here: battery negative and uh, uh, LDU. So that's your electric motor negative, and then that goes off through and all the way down into your electric motor. Now, so, and again, this is obviously powered by the ignition, you know? so these, this gate will not open and allow the negative to be uh, continuous unless the ignition is on. So you may be wondering what is this little boy here? So this little baby is another contactor. It's not as heavy duty because you don't need this. And this is often what is called the pre-charge relay. Okay, so you have to have that as well. Why do we have that? Well, it's sort of again a safety thing. So the idea is, is what you don't want to happen is straight away the full voltage coming through into the straight through into your electric motor. Okay, because it could potentially damage the inverter. So what you do is you sort of have a let's call it a speed bump. So you have this pre-charge relay. So what happens is the, uh, the, the positive um, voltage comes through here, but this remains closed. And what actually happens is, is when you switch the ignition on and you need a control unit, obviously, and you know I'm using the T2C and that um, 
you know has it all um sort of uh you know you link it all up to the various uh, connectors but the idea is is when high when you want to start your car going instead of the full voltage going straight through into your electric motor what happens is this remains closed for a split second and this opens and what happens is is that high voltage comes in and it gets dumbed down a bit so you can see i have a resistor under this big bus bar so the idea is is the high voltage um the high voltage comes in and because that's shut it has nowhere to go bar this way and it comes through this gets opened and then it goes through through that resistor and then back up to there so it sort of bypasses the big contactor and the idea is is with that resistor in place it sort of reduces down the amount of high voltage to sort of let it sort of trickle into the ldu before the big whoosh comes through yeah imagine opening up a dam and you know you let it trickle first and then when it's flowing okay then you let it go straight through like that and current will go through the path of least resistance so the idea is is yeah you switch your ignition on that opens up the power goes starts trickling through that way and then and i'm talking like split second no more than half a second then this will open and then it will just go straight through like this and effectively this bit is redundant so that's what the pre-charge relay is so that's it really um uh there's plenty of wiring diagrams online i actually use the one um that uh, that came with the t2c uh, and they put the fuse here before that before the uh, positive contactor um, and then what i have here is all the wiring here so you effectively got a, a a 12 volt live you need to connect to ignition for the two contactors here and also the pre-charge relay and three grounds yeah so what i have done is i have made and used a super seal connector here so these wires basically they're just four now one uh one ground and then the other three i was talking about and then that connects to my uh control unit and uh and bingo and then basically when the ignition comes on the control unit knows to switch on this first then them two and when you know it works they make a click as well it's quite a loud click um other things about the the junction box you know ideally you know because you've got current coming through here you want it in a metal box um, if you're going to use a metal you know it has to be protected from the elements so this was actually a very expensive box um, this was um, about over 250 pounds but yeah it's about the size of a shoe box it doesn't have to be where i put it i've just put it here because i copied my good friend paulie um, but it's like it, it gives me access to it and it's sort of right above the ldu because on these uh, tesla large drive units the cables are actually quite short um, so yeah so it works um, obviously if it's metal if you use a metal one you've got to ground it so i've ground i've got an earthing point here so that's just an earthing wire at the moment at the moment it's gone to the ldu grounding point um which will also be grounded obviously eventually but um but yeah that's about it i mean you can hardwire the the, the battery connectors into the junction box but i wanted as you can see on all of my battery boxes i just wanted connectors so i can disconnect things as and when i are required as opposed to having it always hardwired but that's about it i hope that's uh, been helped to someone so there you go gang everything i've learned and everything hopefully you need to know about high voltage junction boxes all i'd say is just you know do your research take your time with it plan it out and uh, and don't rush and uh, everything will be all right Anyway, until uh, next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.